শুরু করব আমরা স্যার বলবো আমি गुड इवनिंग एवरीबडी होप in this stressful time all of you are doing well today we are going to have the last session of this term before the ramadan after ramzan we'll be starting again afresh and hopefully in a better situation regarding the covid infection ami ektu pore kotha bolchi today professor rafiq sir our teacher our mentor our beloved founder of ap candid uh, electrophysiology in this country he is going to present some interesting cases and sr was saying he will be going uh, not in a specific way but encompassing the usual problem that we may face in our clinical practice i hope all of us are going to enjoy the session and learning will be uh, as ever much more with his presentation he has the unique capacity capability of presenting very complex things in a very suitable easy digestible way which we can easily remember sir we are waiting for your valuable presentation Good, good afternoon and assalamu alaikum so thank you all um it's a difficult time in in bangladesh actually all over the world um uh, even in the united states there is big surge in the covid uh, <clears throat> and uh, hopefully the vaccination will make some impact uh, on the whole thing i mean i think there is some impact if we look at the people who are affected and got vaccine they probably have milder disease and if we can spread it the other issue is that um is uh, with the precautions um unfortunately people uh, get careless um i i hope that all of you who are listening send the message to people that look take the vaccine and take even with the vaccine take precaution what i want to do today is i want to wrap up the whole session that we did so instead of a lecture what we um what it mentioned is going to be a, um, a i'm going to give ecg questions and then we may discuss the management a little bit if you have uh, if we have time um so i'm going to um share my screen So if we are going to do this, uh, we'll give the ECG about thirty seconds, and then we'll have the um, poll, right? Okay. Yes, sir. We can do that. Okay. Sir, we'll keep the poll for thirty seconds. Yes, please. And then okay. I would like everybody. There are four two participants, including us. I would like all of you to answer. I mean, it doesn't matter. You, you look at the ECG. You say what you think, and then we discuss uh, what. is right or wrong as i have always mentioned that it is something that we have to anything that we say we have to make some comment um without being over confident that i am always right um it applies to me i was giving lecture to the residents after 30 years i still make mistakes and uh, i still learn um it depends on how meticulously i am looking at it uh, there are uh, mistakes there are uh, sometimes we in a rush we ignore things 
So there is nothing wrong with that. Um, but the question is, is the is perfection. And as I give these talks, I am actually learning. And number one, number two is I'm refreshing what I know. Um, before uh, some of the things that I keep, it, it gets erased from the memory. And then when I teach, I, I learn those things. So this is my first TCG. Um, and there are choices. Um, please look at it, look at it carefully. This has grids and everything. Um, when you look at it, you should look at it, come up with the instant diagnosis and then look at the numbers also. Don't just rely on your intuition that, oh, I'm right, uh, this is abnormal, this is normal. Don't say like that. So look, please look carefully. And then will it be possible to bring somebody up to talk about it One from the participant? That would be great. Maribu. Sir, if you invite someone, we can uh, call from the attendees. No, 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 make them panelists so that they can communicate with. Uh, sir, if you select someone, I can bring that person to the panelist then from attendees. Now, do you have their phone number? You can call them. Just. Oh. Well, she'll do it. She, she can she, she, let her take care of the way she feels comfortable. So, all right, let's get the poll. Okay. B. A -M -B. That's good. I mean, uh, we have all the choices and uh, and we have all the answers. Uh, and I'm glad that a lot of people answered. Um, so, um, do you want to invite anybody from the panel, or shall I let let me look at this? And I'm going to do this, and then. So the ch question is. Everybody agree that this is sinus rhythm. I mean, I did not put any other diagnosis to this, but am I right? Um, so let's look at the... So I put up the, I took the P waves and I put them in different locations uh, where they should be. If you can see the AVR is on the right side, AVL is on the left side. And if this, black dot is the sinus node. And if this impulse is coming from here, it will go down towards lead two, two, AVF and three. This is lead two, sorry, I'm sorry, here, lead two, AVF and three. Hello. Let me move my, this bar. Okay, so you can see that the lead two, three AVF, the P wave is upright. What it means that it is moving towards it. Now, this three lead by itself is not good enough. Why? We also need to look at, at lead one. If it is coming from the right side, the lead one will be positive and that makes it sinus rhythm you can have a rhythm coming from right left atrial appendage where my pointer is. Let me change my pointer. Where my pointer is, that ECG will also give positive in two, three ABF, but not in lead one or ABF. So if you find a rhythm where it's upright in two, three ABF and lead one and ABL is negative, that's probably a left atrial rhythm that's coming from the top. A lot of times it comes from left atrial appendage. So that's what it is. So this is sinus rhythm. Uh, so we all agree on that. The question is the QRS axis. Is it normal or abnormal? Lead one is positive. So it's on the right side. Lead AVF is negative. It's on the top. So it is between zero and minus 90 degrees. Now, 
Let's look at another lead, lead two. Lead two is positive. Here is lead two. If lead two is positive, it will be between zero and 30 degree. So that's, a not with, that's an acceptable normal range of axis. So the rhythm is sinus, QRS axis normal. So even though I put the, all those diagnoses, none of them are actually um, correct. So we it's basically this is number two is correct. It's a normal rhythm. So um, whoever answered all those other also, they are very close, closed um, uh, thing, but please remember, please measure it. Please look at it. And also remember, keep, please keep a visual image of this ECG. This is the ECG that encompasses 90% of ECG in a clinical practice, unless we get referred patients. So normal ECG. Thank you all. So can um, I ask? Yeah. Sir, the first ECG, sir. Yeah. Sir, the number three size is sinus rhythm, left anterior fascicular block. Yeah. Sir, is there any variation of duration in case of the uh, fascicular block? The question is, if there is left anterior fascicular block, will there be a QRA duration change? Maybe. Why? Because the other two fascicles are in good uh, uh, condition. So usually what we use is the QRS axis because left posterior fascicle, right bundle are going to conduct as usual. But most of the time you may see some duration, but the criteria for left anterior fascicular block is varies, but normally people will say more than 40, minus 45 degree, and then there's a small Q in lead one and small R in lead three. Here I have a small R in lead three, but not a small Q. And the QRS axis, of course, is so mainly the diagnostic criteria is the axis and presence of those Q wave in lead one and lead three. Our way. Thank you, Adhan. Thank you, sir. Volunteer participant can raise hand, please. Okay, that's good. So um, what do the Ratahar, one of you want to comment on this, then I will pitch in. Majority of the people say junction rhythm with retrograde P wave. And 22% said um, <clears throat> left atrial rhythm. And then sinus rhythm with short period and sinus rhythm normally CG one and one person. Uh, okay. Ribu, is there any volunteer participant, Ribu? Yes, let's uh, get somebody. Uh, sir, in the panelists now, there is uh, Mr. Buddhadev Ganguly and okay. Lieutenant Colonel uh, Nizamul Hussain Shodakar. Can you connect any one of them? Uh, sir, they are in the panelists. I'm asking them to unmute. Nizam, can you describe and what is your decision? Dr. Nizam, are you there? Or Buddha Dev, are you there with us? Poppy Bala, I can, uh, can you unmute yourself, Poppy Bala? Hello, 
abiertas. Bobby, para la, ¿can you describe this easy? So this is a, this is a 12 lead easy surface easy. Uh, the speed is 25, with the rate is around more than 80 millise, uh, 80 bit per minute. Rhythm is regular. There is an inverted P followed by QRS complex in the 2, 3 AVF and all the precordial lead except V1 and AVR. And, so, and there are some non specific STT chains can be seen throughout the ECG, sir. So, what is the diagnosis? Sir, most probably it is a left atrial rhythm with non specific STT changes, sir. Okay, yeah. So let's look at it. I mean, because we have vote, and both make sense. One is junctional rhythm with retrograde P wave. So let's address that. If there is a junctional rhythm, it comes from the AV node. <clears throat> and then it goes backward into the atrium and forward into the ventricle. Normally, the time to travel from the AV node to the atrium will be about 80 milliseconds. So if it is junctional rhythm, most of the time you will find the retrograde P wave either before or after the QRS within 80 milliseconds of the QRS complex. This one is a little longer, number one. Number two, if it is coming from through the AV node, Please visualize the AV node is in the center of the heart. It will come up and then it will go to the right and to the left. That means when it will go to the right, it will go straight up into the V1, it will be positive, which it is. But when it will go to the left, it will make a positive P wave in V1, V6, I'm sorry. So because it is going towards V6. So this, if we look at this one, here is, I have, I have superimposed this on a grid. If you look at V1, fine, positive. And then all of them will lead on this. So that can only, if it was coming from here, it will go towards V6 and V6 would have been positive or kind of flat. The fact that it is negative in V6, that means it is moving away from V6. And V6 is near the left atrium. So it is a left atrial rhythm. And so it is supported by the few fact the PR interval is longer than 80 milliseconds. And then it is negative in left leads. That means V6, uh, V5, V4. So this is a left atrial rhythm. AVL, if you look at, it's kind of positive. Why? Because AVL is a little higher up. So this is actually moving a little bit towards the AVL also. So the, the, I think that may have confused people that why come, how come the AVL is, is positive? Because AVL is not in the lower part of the left atrium. So it's the left atrial rhythm. That's, and unless anybody else have any other comment. Can I comment, uh, sir? Yes, please. Uh, sir. Please. <laughs> Left atrial rhythm, uh, in that case, uh, lead one, uh, P wave here is inconspicuous. Uh, yes. Either positive or negative, we cannot mention here. Yes. So it's kind of flattened. Flattened. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't even see. So that, that uh, uh, then I can't make any comment on that. So it's, it's, it, the, the, lead one is somewhere up here. Um, yes, so sir. AVL is a little higher than lead one. So I think that's what it is. So it's, it's, this is a left atrial rhythm. And it's very typical. Yes, this is... Any terms are low atrial rhythm? Is there any term? Well, yeah. I mean, it, listen, it's like if you call it an atrial, if somebody told me this is an atrial rhythm, I will accept it. If you say low atrial rhythm, I will accept it. And then it becomes more specific. So atrial rhythm will be a broad term for this rhythm, which will include sinus rhythm also. And then if you say low atrial rhythm, I will take it because it is coming from the lower part of the atrium because two, three AVF is negative. 
Negative. And then we want to be a little bit more specific. Is it right or left? And then if you call me left at terrorism, I will accept it. And more. is there any uh, is our, uh, POF and QRS complex, that means our way, PR interval uh, is more shorter if junctional rhythm or uh, then low atrial rhythm or atrial rhythm. Is there any? Absolutely. absolutely. You're absolutely right. The PR interval will be shorter. That's what I said that usually the P wave will be within 80 milliseconds of the QRS complex in, in case of junctional rhythm. rhythm. Yes. Unless there is very rarely you can find longer, but that's very, very unusual. But let's, we should always think what is normal. So as, as Dr. Paul mentioned that if we call it a atrial rhythm, I'll take it. If you call it a left low atrial rhythm, I will accept it. And of course, I like it very much if you call it left atrial rhythm. Sir, Thank I have you. a question, sir. sir? Yes. Sir, yes. Mane, for, for this case, sir, mane, we want to hear some few comments regarding the management that is symptomatic versus asymptomatic. This case, sir, management. This patient was totally asymptomatic. I mean, and you'll find a lot of these ECG. Uh, they have actually left atrial, they have no symptoms. So, this, unless they become tachycardic when it becomes left atrial tachycardic. This is within normal range. Um, they have no clinical symptom at all. And so do nothing about it. So we'll keep a note of it. I have seen many patients, sir, with left atrial, yes. low left atrial rhythm, and they are, as you were saying, totally asymptomatic. Yes. Thank you. Any other, any other comment? No. In that case, uh, no treatment is required. Is there any... Uh, 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 other uh, risk factor or cause like ischemic heart disease, uh, like chronic coronary syndrome, but uh, others? No, 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 the question is if there's any relation with any structural heart disease. Uh, no, most of the time it is something. Secondly, it has no relevance because it's the atrial issue. It has no much, not much of a relevance to coronary artery disease. I mean, Sorry. of course, the STT segment change, you have to keep an eye on it, whether patient has hypertension or anything or that will be decided by the clinical presentation of the patient based on the STT segment change. Um, that's a different issue beyond the rhythm problem itself. Sir, can I ask a question, sir? Yes. A few patient uh, uh, with structural heart disease before operation or before device closure, we get this type of uh, low atrial focus, sir. So yes. on that occasion, uh, what precaution or what will be counseling to the parents that after surgery or after device closure, what can happen, sir? And now we are talking about pediatric domain, right? Right, sir. Yeah, pediatric patient has more junctional rhythm. It's, that's interesting. Pediatric post-surgery patient gets junctional tachycardia, junctional rhythm. I think, again, the management will be based on the symptom. And no, the sir, I'm, I'm telling before operation or before procedural intervention, we get sometimes this finding. Yes. Yeah, I mean, we would keep a note on it, of it, but I don't think an atrial rhythm with the heart, if the heart rate is 87 um, or uh, I'm, whatever the rate is, below 100, um, we'll not, we'll just keep an eye on it. Nothing, nothing to be worried about. This will not prohibit the patient from getting surgery. Sir, one question from Ojoy, consultant from CLET. Why SNOD is suppressed here? Oh. Is there any uh, reason behind? Well, I mean, it, one of the two things. One, um, I have no follow-up. Unfortunately, a lot of patients, I have follow-up ECG. One, maybe there are two rhythms. They're competing with each other. Maybe the sinus was a little slower than that. I mean, we, you see that happen, that there is sinus bradycardia, then you get left atrial rhythm. On the other hand, you can also see accelerated left atrial rhythm. And as I told you, that the, unless the rate becomes an issue, we just don't do anything about it. Um, they keep flipping back and forth. And most of these patients are symptomatic. These are patients that we find on the routine random ECGs. Um, thank you. Thank you, sir. Govindo, Govindo, we will discuss the issue, this ECG, Govindo. Yeah. Okay, good.
after result of a pool right right after result of pool right I'm glad that majority are answering, and I there are now 79. So I think we, more more people should answer these questions. So we have uh, 13 people answered. So the poll is done. Majority said it's uh, sinus tachycardia with ventricular premature beat. Govinda, any comment? Yes, yes sir. Yes. The 12 blade ECG shows uh, ventricular rate uh, more than 100 and uh, it's sinus rhythm and some premature ventricular complex in V4, V5, and uh, V6. And also in uh, uh, only three leads, few, a few premature ventricular complex. But otherwise, it's uh, sinus rhythm and sinus tachycardia. That means sinus tachycardia with uh, premature, occasional premature ventricular uh, complex. Can I make a comment, sir? Yes, please. Uh, number one, it's a simultaneous reading. So the so-called premature beat you are seeing, a single premature beat. Now, look at the same time the rhythm strip, which is recording at the same time. All the QRS complexes are corresponding. Look at this. That premature beat is not present in here. So this is likely to be an electrical aberration. So I would go for sinus tachycardia with non-specific TUF changes. Anybody else want to comment or should I? Okay. Or there is, look at this, there is also the uh, TUF inversion or pause, nothing is there. So it's difficult to so whether it is an uh, external premature. <laughs> More yeah, of what there is P wave ahead. And PF, PF, normal P wave. P wave seems to be a little peaked, but uh, duration and height is almost normal. Uh, and uh, one beat seems to be ventricular ectopic, but that's an artificial um, deflection. Uh, I, I go with the four, what uh, Wadud said. Okay. Yes, the point second is the preceding P wave. If P wave is present uh, uh, ventricular ectopics, yeah. then we can tell that it's uh, premature ventricular ectopics. The P wave occurring at the same time and the beat, look at the yes, R interval. Yes, it's premature, it is not. Quite complex. It's not it's premature and it's, um, uh, there is no compensation. Most probably R defects already. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Interpolated so, ectopic. Sir, interpolated ectopic could be uh, uh, things, but it never corresponds with the uh, uh, rhythm stream. That is why yes. it is not yeah. the... Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, I found this, is, I found it interesting. It is sinus tachycardia, no question about it. That is non-specific T wave changes. If you look in lead V6, it looks like a wide QRS ventricular beat, even though the beat is not premature. I'll come to the bottom of the strip later, but if you look at V4, the beginning looks exactly like the normal QRS cup. And then, of course, as Odud mentioned, in lead two, which is a rhythm strip in the bottom, there are simultaneous. There is no change, and the PR interval is normal. So this is the common, I mean, please keep an eye on this. I mean, we'll see this kind of ECG, and if this kind of rhythm becomes multiple, you can have artificial artifactual ventricular tachycardia. We see it all the time on the rhythm strips uh, on telemetry monitors. So this is sinus tachycardia with non-specific T-wave changes. The other thing, please remember, I use the term premature beat, 
this bid by Calipar is not premature. So if it is the white QRS bid, we'd have to think something else. Is there a left bundle branch back about Asia? Or is there a very late um, ventricular bid that is coming exactly at the same time, which will be very, very difficult to happen. And as uh, Dr. Shafiq mentioned, if it are interpolated, you will see it in the middle of between two QRS complexes. So this is sinus tachycardia. Thank you all. Sir, one question, sir. Yeah. Sir, previous yeah. issue, sir. Sir, at the same time, and the rhythm strip at the bottom that is lead two, whether yes. this, sir, that beat, whether corresponds with the same, sir, when I, should we consider that the, uh, 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 that is the beat in the rhythm strip as a standard for comparison? Yeah, well, in our machines, yes. It depends. If you, <clears throat> most machines, if they record it at the same time, it will. It is the same beat. And I'm in Bangladesh. The older machines were not, but now all the machines are all over the world are like that. Uh, the rhythm strips. Some of the machines will put one lead. Some put three leads, uh, which makes it very confusing. More confusing having three rhythm strips. But I I like it one rhythm strip. So this is simultaneous. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Please don't think too complex. Please remember we are wrapping it up in real life practice. Not all ECG are complex ECGs. Uh, simple things are also <laughs> there. If you look at somebody who looks like Dr. Shafiq, that's Dr. Shafiq, it's not somebody else. This is good. Um, so who will comment on this? Dr. Shafiq, you want to talk about it? Shafiq, I, so. I, I already unmuted myself. So this is uh, definitely, uh, uh, but it seems to be three. So this is three is correct because uh, this is actual fibrillation, never actual flutter because uh, waves are not uh, so, uh, to, but a bit sort of th in uh, V2 earlier part, but later on it is uh, in other parts it is not sort of shaped. So it is actual fibrillation and slow ventricular rate. Ventricular rate is slow, and at the same time there is poor wave progression from V1 to V5 definitely. So I would go with uh, three, sir. Yeah. Thank you. So whoever answered flutter, of course, looked at those waves and uh, Dr. Shafiq mentioned, you can see these organized waves, but actually it's very disorganized. And this is fibrillation. It's a, we call it coarse actual fibrillation. And number two is partially correct. But when you look at an ECG, please also look at other things. You know, the poor RA progression. What it means, clinical significance, that's a different story. Um, you have to go through the differential diagnosis of it. Um, Thank you. And the, the actual fibrillation, uh, we don't want to talk about management, but remember anticoagulation issue, duration of the actual fibrillation, whether to do, uh, what to do about it, uh, all those things should be taken into consideration. Thank you. Sir, one question. Sir, yeah. sir is there any term flutter and fibrillation simultaneously? Sometimes we say it is a flutter fibrillation. Yes. yes. We, we use the term flutter fibrillation. Um, but, you know, it's the, the problem is is like sometimes we have actually recorded signals. In many years ago, we used to put a catheter in the coronary sinus. 
in patients with atrial fibrillation. And that coronary sinus electrode will come, connect to one of the channels in the halter monitor, and then we will also do the surface. And we would find that the patient is in atrial fibrillation and the left side is in flutter. Um, so some people do use it if there is a combination of that. But I think that's a pretty fake term. I try to avoid it. Um, to, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's like not committing yourself. I think this, in this case, this is clearly um, atrial fibrillation. Sir, one uh, management related question, sir. Yeah. Sir, there is a, uh, there is a first episode of atrial fibrillation. Sometimes we face this patient. Yes. And we, uh, sir, uh, and, uh, we advise the, uh, that is the anticoagulant, but after yes. follow up, how long we should continue the anticoagulant if there is no atrial fibrillation again, six months, 12 months like this? Is there any? Yeah, I mean, the question is how long to continue? Once the, our, the, what we practice is once we document atrial fibrillation in a patient, we use the chat fast code. Even if they maintain sinus rhythm, we will continue anticoagulation based on the chest vas code. Because sometimes it may happen, these patients can have very brief episode of atrial fibrillation where they are asymptomatic. So unless there is a contraindication, they should be anticoagulated based on the chest vas code. That is our practice. Thank you. We have got Arun Musk with us, sir. Oh, Arun, how are you doing? Arun Musk, you unmute yourself. Is motion online? Motion. Motion unmute, please. Okay. So we have everything. We have everything here. Uh, majority said ectopic actual tachycardia or actual flutter with two to one conduction. A motion is there. Motion. Sadi bhai. Sadi bhai. Maski, can you hear us? Atar, why don't you do this? Is there any participant, uh, Ribu? Oh, yeah. Uh, sir, uh, yes. sir, one uh, participant raised, the, raised his hands. Okay. Yes, please. Okay, okay. Saifuddin Chaudhuri. Okay. He's in the panelist now. Okay, okay. Saifuddin Chaudhuri. Hello, Saifuddin Chaudhuri. Unmute, unmute please. Saifuddin, can you unmute and respond? Sir, I think... I think the communication probably is a problem. Yes, yes. Poppy Bala? Hello?
Govindu. Sir, I have a comment. Uh, I am disagree yeah. uh, with Airtel Flutter with twist to one connection with uh, incomplete RBB. I support here the ectopic Airtel tachycardia with incomplete right bundle branch block. Okay. Because PUA morphology is different uh, from sinus and also uh, exactly uh, RR interval is not 150 per minute. That means twist to one conduction in, in case of atrial flutter with twist to one conduction. In that case, here uh, rate is not exactly 150. Jamil. Sir. And pure uh, morphology is deviated from sinus. Yeah. To me, uh, it most likely it is atrial flutter with twist to one every block with uh, incomplete right one with one block. Uh, second possibility what Govinda said. Okay. So let's look at it. Some people say sinus tachycardia with incomplete right bundle branch block. <clears throat> Clearly, there is a P wave before QRS complex, but that P wave is negative in 2, 3 AVM. So sinus tachycardia with incomplete right bundle branch block is out of the question. Second question is, is it atrial fibrillation with rapid ventricular response? It is very regular. Once it is very regular, the atrial fibrillation goes out. So we now are we are now left with atrial flutter with two to one conduction with incomplete or ectopic atrial tachycardia. These are both valid options. And if I use a little bit of imagination, I can say, well, this is either T wave or this is the second flutter wave. And if my theory is correct, then if I put a caliper, they will match up. And if you look at lead three, it looks kind of funny, but that does not really confirm it. But there are both are valid options. If you remove the QRS in your brain, you will see it looks like a saw. So what is it? So I always like confirmation. And if you see here that once it slows down, I can see the flutter wave better. And you see this flutter wave, this flutter wave, the other flutter wave is now in the QRS complex. And then there is a flutter wave here. And then there is a flutter wave here. So sometimes uh, a little bit of imagination and of course ECG. Uh, so this was atrial flutter with two water conduction. The rate is a little slow and Govindo was absolutely right. And that was the confusing part of this ECG. Rate was 114 bits per minute. Normally, actual flutter is um, 150 bits. Unfortunately, we use amyoid around these days. We use antirhythmic medicine and they make it slow. And sometimes you will find slower actual flutter. So this flutter rate is basically 228, uh, or a little bit more than 228. And uh, it's Two to one conduction. Thank and you. this flutter is actually very difficult. The, when the flutter gets low, it becomes mu much more of a problem to control their heart rate. Management wise, um, anticoagulation, um, cardioversion at one time. And then if that doesn't, if it comes back, this looks like a typical atrial flutter. You can do atrial flutter ablation, and the success rate of atrial flutter ablation is close to 100%. And recurrence rate is less than. I quote 5%, but it's way less than that. In last 25, 30 years, I had only two cases where actual flutter came back after ablation once it is pure actual flutter. Thank you. Sir, I have a question, sir. Yeah. Sir, sir in this ECG, it is clear, but sometimes you are confused to categorize that is 2 is to 1, 3 is to 1, that is difficult to count the flutter rate. Sir, yeah. is there any simple way, sir? But in this ECG, clear, but sometimes you are confused, sir. Of course. I mean, listen, um, there you some. There are cases where you can't tell them. Like yesterday, my wife showed me an ECG and she asked me, what is it? I said, either it's sinus tachycardia or actual flutter with two-tone conduction. And we have to put both options in, in the field, um, in the diagnosis. So some, some cases you won't be able to see it. This is very, very clear. As you said, some cases you cannot. But remembering the differential diagnosis is the key for us. Um, I don't know. Sir, uh, am I drone is a good option here? Um, for, for supraventricular arrhythmia, 
we do not, we like to avoid amiodarone. As a matter of fact, the use of amiodarone has gone down significantly. Right now, we use amiodarone only for older patients who have atrial fibrillation and cannot take any other medicine to keep them in sinus rhythm. In this case, this is a, um, a 86. I mean, this patient probably will go for an ablation or one-time cardioversion. So if this patient came to me first time, one time I'll do anticoagulation with cardioversion. And if it comes back again, then I will um, do ablation um, of atrial flutter. And this will work. This is very typical flutter. Okay, so this is a patient whose ejection fraction in August was 55%. Now in April of 2020 was 55%, comes to the hospital um, with ejection fraction of 30%, and this is the ECG. Heart rate is 151. So I'm make, trying, I'm not trying to make life difficult. The patient is trying to make our life difficult. So what is it? important ECG. Yes, and remember, this patient, this this ECG was done in the hospital while patient is lying comfortably in bed. So that's that's an that's an issue. Hello. Hello. After the treatment, the treatment is covered. Beautiful treatment is covered. The treatment is Arun Maski, can you hear us? So we have a good, equal, almost equal distribution of all the choices. Can I comment, sir? Yes, please. 12-bit uh, ECG shows uh, uh, sinus rhythm uh, rate uh, around 150, already uh, 151. And uh, old uh, Q, uh, QOF and a little bit uh, PR segment is depression in one AVL and ST concave upward uh, elevation in one AVL as well. And also uh, old uh, Q, uh, QOF in V2, V3, V4, and V5, and also V6. That means old MI anteroseptal with sinus tachycardia and also background is uh, heart failure and also pericarditis as well. Okay. Uh, Govindu. Yes, sir. Achha, coronary diagnosis is okay, but what about the rhythm? Rhythm. Uh, POAB is uh, mm, Lead three and lead two, very much difficult to uh, probably sinus rhythm. Uh, can I make a comment, sir? Yes, please. Uh, this is a difficult disease. Uh, you can comment. This is actually uh, not difficult. The circumstantial evidence is there. A patient who has been stable now having. Reduce ejection fraction with rapid heart rate, which is around 150. Now, look at the P, uh, P wave presence. It is far away from the QS complex. In case of sinus tachycardia, the PR in Delta should have been shortened. Because of the increased sympathetic activity, because of the heart failure, the patient should have uh, PR in Delta much shorter. And that means the possibility is that this could be a atrial tachycardia or flutter 
with old antiseptic amide. And that has reduced the ejection fraction so much. Ooh. Anybody else want to comment anything? So, so clearly the tachycardia rate is 151. If a patient is lying comfortably in bed, unless they're very, very sick, hemodynamic, it is very difficult to get a heart rate of 151. The other thing that I always do is that if I do an ECG now and half an hour later, the heart rate is still 151, that cannot be sinus tachycardia. But still, it's a possibility in this case, but unlikely. <clears throat> now, there is a P wave before the QRS complex, and the P wave is upright in two AVF. T is kind of biphasic. If it was AV node adrenant and tachycardia, the P wave will be going from AV node towards the atria, and it will be inverted in lead 2, 3 AVF, which it is not. And also, it is a long RP tachycardia. The long RP tachycardia is usually sinus tachycardia or atrial tachycardia or atypical avionodal drain. These are the three possibilities. So now let's look at atrial flutter. <clears throat> if let's look at lead V1, you can see that there is a P wave here. There is a P wave here. If there is another P flutter, there should have been one in the middle. There is none. So it's not, it is unlikely to be atrial flutter. So the diagnosis most likely in this case is atrial tachycardia with old anteroceptor myocardial infarction. Please remember that I have added it in all cases. Please don't ignore those findings. Um, I, I'm not sure about this bit, uh, whether this is an artifact um, or a ventricular premature bit, but it is there consistently. Um, so I'm still confused with this ECG. So I went back on the telemetry floor. My question was either atrial tachycardia or unlikely possibility of sinus tachycardia, but more so than of atrial tachycardia. So this is the ECG, uh, next ECG. This is the rhythm strip. Now you can see that clearly there is a ventricular premature beat, which it was there before. This is sinus rhythm. And then patient goes into this tachycardia. So it was clearly this patient was going in and out of atrial tachycardia. And one of the, probably the possibility what happened that patient has tachycardia induced cardiomyopathy. And when the patient converts back to sinus rhythm, this is 12 ECG, look at the P wave. It's totally different from the first one. Here we have left atrial enlargement um, and right atrial enlargement, um, but the other ECG showed a different kind of P wave in V1. So we're keeping an eye, um, uh, 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 always look back and having curiosity and trying to find out what the answer was. So the diagnosis of this patient was atrial tachycardia. Sir, pass easily, please, sir. Yeah. Sir. sir, as the patient is quite stable, but this is the tachycardia. Is the, sir, is there any role of adenosine for the diagnosis purpose, sir, in this case? Okay. The question is, will adenosine aid in the diagnosis of this, in this situation? If I had a question about a second P wave and I was not sure, yes. But if I put a caliper, in the middle, there is nothing. So this one, probably not. But if you give adenosine, what will happen, two things may happen. If it, the tachycardia stops, you'll be more confused because some actual tachycardia can respond to adenosine. It is unlikely, but some do. And let's say I give adenosine. If I see the block, it will confirm our diagnosis of atrial tachycardia. But you will still be confused. Well, maybe it is sinus tachycardia with block. So adenosine is not going to be of much of a help in this case. Sir, in Empire, can you use a directed message? Yes. Carotid sinus message is a quick way of doing it. Um, as long as you um, younger doctors, uh, you should learn this technique, but please remember before you do carotid and massage, please listen to the carotids. That's an important thing. Second, patient must be lying down, not sitting up, because with carotid sinus massage, we can have vessel 
uh, the, the high vagal tone and we have pause. And uh, it, yeah, cartilage sinus massage, uh, it, it, sometimes we do that to create block. Or we have to look in uh, the rhythm strip. Here, is it T wave or P wave or merges T and P yeah. wave? <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's the part that um, what Govind is saying in rhythm strip, is it the P wave or the T wave? Oh, it can be both. I mean, that's the confusion. That's what makes it very confusing. But if we go in lead V1, that solves yeah. the problem. Yeah. I can see the discrete wave. So that's why looking at multiple lead helps. If you look at lead V1, um, or lead V3, you can see the discrete P wave at the same time of the of the what it looks like T wave in lead two. Sir, so one one sir, one yeah. question. Sir, yeah. whether said bus score is also applicable for this atrial tachycardia, sir? Well, no, not really. I mean, uh, atrial tachycardia is uh, the chest bus score. The question is, is chest bus score applicable to atrial tachycardia? No, because the atrium is contracting. So that applies for atrial flutter and atrial fibrillation. Unless you have suspicion of atrial fibrillation or flutter, that's a different story. Because can, as I mentioned- Can you use just beta blocker metoprolol after uh, uh, control of heart failure? Uh, this patient? The, the question is the treatment. The treatment is, um, yes, of course, because these patients are cardiomyopathy, the first drug that we're going to use is beta blocker. Um, Lot of times, atrial tachycardia atrial is very difficult to treat. Um, and the drug that works best is, are the calcium channel blockers. The problem is this patient has cardiomyopathy now. Uh, so calcium channel blocker will be difficult to use. So yes, um, Govinda is absolutely right. The first drug of choice will be beta blocker. And that's what we did. And she did fine. And in beta which blocker. beta blocker is more appropriate? Is it metoprolol, bisoprolol, nebibolol? Cardiomyopathy. Mm -hmm. Our choice, we use, Barbitolol. we use, if heart failure patients, I prefer carbidolol. But when there is tachycardia, um, metoprolol is better in controlling tachycardia. Like if somebody has atrial fibrillation, better, metoprolol is better. For this one, you can randomly choose anyone because there is no data that any one of them is any better than that other one. Uh, my preference is metoprolol succinate. I do not use tartrate for heart failure patients with patients with cardiomyopathy. Uh, Carvidilol is a choice um, and bisoprolol, whichever. I mean, all three drugs have been proven to be beneficial in heart failure. My preference for heart failure, number one is carvidilol, number two metoprolol succinate, number three bisoprolol. We don't use bisoprolol much in this country. Uh, the problem with heart failure with um, carvidilol, good thing is that once you have achieved 6.25 milligram, there is benefit and there is increasing benefit with higher doses. Thank you. Thank you. One hour. So we'll continue another 15 minutes and then stop it. Okay, sir. This is not an uncommon ECG, um, probably one of the commonest of this type of ECGs. Um, this is Wadu. Wadu is the right person, sir. Yes, Wadu is the master of this. Ask <laughs> Arnu <laughs> Kimbalu. Ojoy, Asu, Ojoy. Ojoy, can you respond? Ojoy? Ojoy, to silo, sir. Dago to Asu, kina? Ojoy. Har kaise dago to? Comment kore silo, sir. Ako mane panelist tisha be Asu kina, sir. Ribu Ojoy ke panelist karo na. Whether your teaching has worked? Side exercise, sir. Actually. Eh. But still five. Good number of. Physicians answer number one. So, Bodhut, can you comment on this, please? Uh, whenever you get negative complex in uh, lead one, the possibilities are there is uh, dextrocardia 
or there is technical justification this is limply displaced plane or there is posterior hemi block or there is a big Q in lead one producing this loss of muscle in the lateral wall. Now, in that case, except the lead lead displacement or dextrocardia, the P wave should have been upright. Here the P wave is negative. Let's go to AVR then. In AVR, we actually cannot see uh, any uh, P wave, which should have been negative. But the first complex, part of the QS complex is positive. So that raised the possibility that this could be either lead displacement or dextrocardia. Now let's go to chest leads. Here the R wave is gradually progressing from right side to left side. From V1 to V5, V6, the R wave is gradually increasing. So it's not dextrocardia. The possibility is therefore sinus rhythm but limb lead limb misplacement. Lead. Yes. Two, three AVF, they are positive. So this is not an ectopic rhythm. And the PR interval also is quite all right. Thank you. So this is the um, same patient earlier ECG. You can see that P wave is upright. So this is the other thing I always tell that if it was uh, if there is a, a Q wave in lead one, I would expect some Q wave in V six also, right? Was it? Yes. And that, that doesn't add up because it's such a huge big Q wave that means almost like a lateral MI, and that should have re reflected in the V six. So thinking globally, I mean, when you look at an ECG, please please get into the habit of looking at the corresponding lead. That means lead one is a lateral lead. And if there is a Q wave in lateral lead in one, there should have been a Q wave in V5 or V6, uh, which is absent. And of course, I'm glad that majority answered. So please keep this. This is one of the commonest uh, limb lead, uh, lead misplacement. Sometimes we will see lead placement, misplacement of V1, V2, V3, giving rise to difficult in the poor our, in our way progression and those kind of things. Um, I'm going to, yeah, I think we should do these things because we have done difficult ones. Uh, these are simpler, but relevant. Any comment, please? Sir, the, here, it's a very simple ECG, but we have to pay attention to what are the slight abnormalities at present. Obviously, it's a sinus rhythm. The slight uh, ST segment changes in one AVL, also slight, uh, also in lead two. Look at the axis. The axis is to be at right angle of lead 2 and whether it is on the right side or the left side. If it is on the right side, then lead 3 would have been uh, more positive. It's not. So it's going to the left side. Then in that case, AVL should be positive and it should be the highest positive. And that's it there. But is it the left axial rotation is there? It is left axis deviation. That's a difficult question because the QRS complex at right angle is
fixed within the margin of normal uh, uh, axis. But lepetal enlargement is obvious. So I think as uh, Wadud mentioned, subtle changes, we need to keep those in mind. Axis one and AVL, one is positive, it's on the right side. AVF is negative, it's on the top between zero and 90. But lead two is actually more positive than negative. Uh, if you look at the area of the lead two is more. So it is between zero and 30 degrees. So leftward, but it's still within normal range. Yes. So other thing is that it's not bilateral and large, it's left lateral and large band. You can see the deep wide um, wave. Um, so uh, the diagnosis uh, I'll take will be sinusism with left lateral enlargement and other uh, findings that Odud mentioned, you have to describe those, estrogen segment depression, whether, what is the clinical relevance of it? That's the different story. But Sir, we have to, uh, yeah. Clinically, whenever I see this patient in a 73 year old person, a uh, female person, I would go for in the echo to find out the LV diastolic dysfunction. Mm -hmm. uh, that's very likely in this patient. All right, so I, shall we do one more and then close it? I'm going to go for an interesting ECG. Um, uh, so we're going to skip through all these things. Um, we, we... Ah, this one. So I'm, I just put lead V1 and lead 2. Sir, should I start the poll? Let them look at it. Yeah, why not? Again, difficult this is Jamil get ready. <laughs> this is easy for Jamil. Very good. Excellent. Nice response. Three. Excellent. Jamil. It's a Himalayan P wave. Sir. Yeah. dyssynchrony as well. As the Jamil is busy. Show me if you can come in. So it is a uh, uh, P. This is a very large P, so it is, seems to be Himalayan P wave, something like that. And the uh, PP interval is regular, or uh, interval is regular, but there is no relation with P wave and QRS complex. So this, uh, this is complete AV dissociation. And red is red is not that much low. Red is. Uh, 64, something like that. Uh, 64, something like that. So, seems to be uh, idioventricular rhythm, but there is... Uh, no, no, no. No, but it is complete heart block. It is with, complete heart block. With the uh, right atrial enlargement, and that is very big right atrial enlargement. So, your size is three, complete heart block three. with right atrial enlargement. Right, right. Maybe dissociation. Maybe dissociation is complete, but dissociation is there. So, this, this is an interesting ECG because <clears throat> this but kind of patient... This kind of patient, if they are in telemetry floor and goes into complete heart block with asystole, you may think that the P waves are actually QRS complexes. So it, it has happened. Um, in the EP lab that we're doing study, and then patient went in the heart block, I said to the technician, can you start pacing? And he said, why are you screaming? 
I said, look at, and what happens when the QR, so the QRSs are so small. The same patient, um, this patient had congenital complete heart loss. And you can see uh, with the 12 bleed, V5, V6, you can see the QRS complex is much um, taller. But in the dim bleed, it, it is huge right actual enlargement, uh, big P wave, almost, um, as you said, Himalayan P waves. I think uh, we should, uh, and look at this. We, I put the timing. If you look at the RR timing, there is some variation because it's a junctional escape, junctional rhythm with underlying complete hull, but P2P interval is exactly constant at 600 milliseconds. Was it Epstein anomaly, sir? Epstein. No, this patient was not Epstein. Epstein also get, um, I don't remember this. Let me, I see. This is the 34 Thank patient. You, Almost looks like Epstein because you know, it looks like two QRS complexes here. Epstein's actually get double QRS complex. Yes, look at this. Um, I don't have the clinical issues, I can't quote it, but uh, absolutely Himalayan P waves. And then if you look at lead two, V2, there are two QRS complexes. That's very typical for Epstein, actually. I don't remember the clinical scenario of this patient. This is from 2004. I tried to find this patient, but I could not. Without the date of birth, I cannot find it. Sir, uh, yeah. in the uh, lead two rhythm history, yes. The QRS complex, there is a small negative deflection. Is it a retrograde P wave again? No, no, but you know, it looks like, but if you look at lead, lead V2, look at the QRS. It's a double QRS complexes. Ah. This is the second part of the QRS. Epstein get this. If you, it all looks like almost there are two QRS complexes next to each other. <laughs> all right, so I think we should stop here. Um, I mean, I always consider it as a privilege that uh, you all give me this opportunity to, to, to present and share my knowledge with you. And what I expect from not all of you, some of you to bear the torch. We will be here for another few years, who knows how long. But all of us, the faculty who is sitting here, these are passionate people. What is their gain? Gain is sharing the knowledge. And I hope that some of you will do that. In the country, it doesn't matter where you are, you give it to others. And also other thing I feel like that if, I always tell people that husband, wife, couple, they raise most of the time these days, two children over a period of 40 years. And they are lucky if they grow up as good children. So all of us here, if we can make two doctors with knowledge, compassion, that will be our success. And that's the way I look at life. That if what I'm, I am doing and all of us are doing, if we can leave behind it two person who, who can give care, compassion with knowledge, and there will be gap in knowledge. Um, we will not know ever know everything, but we can make people smile. Or the patient can tell us, well, the doctor was not the best in the world, but he cared. He cared. And I think that is important. The other part is that we cannot cure everything, but we can actually make people feel good that somebody cared for that person. And that is what will make us physician. And thank you again. I, I'm out of the country, but you you call me into this and I'm happy to be part of it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. What is that? Phone is busy, sir. Okay. Uh, before, uh, before concluding the session, what is it? Okay. We can take few comments from our panelists before concluding the session, and finally I will conclude the session. Actually, we have got good number. Okay. 
Is there our international faculty, Orun Maski? Orun Maski? I could not see him. Sir, Dr. Orun Maski, sir, is not here right Achha. now. Uh, the, uh, first of all, our uh, pediatric faculty, Naharuma, you are here? Uh, yes, sir. I am here, sir. <laughs> Naharuma, actually, uh, before Ramadan, this is the last session, and we will again start after the Ramadan and we will have again the paid session. We are actually impressed by your session. Can you make any comment about our session? Uh, I have no words because I am not at that level that I can comment like uh, in Rofik sir's presentation. But I can say that the motivational word that he mentioned in last, that is the, uh, that is the best part of these things. That if I took one thing, or can apply in my patient and I can save my patient. That is the, uh, that is the target and that is the uh, main things of this session. And thank you, sir, all of you that uh, you all acknowledge the pediatric, uh, pediatric ECG and pediatric things because that is also uh, totally different. I, I must uh, uh, appreciate you all that anytime we can seek your help, you help us because we have less exposure in ECG. And I also, uh, you, Wadud sir, and Rokik sir, I, anytime I can if put an ECG and you help me, that is the best thing and uh, excellent thing for me, sir. Thank you, sir. Appreciation, Aroma. A.M. Shopik. Thank you, sir. Actually, nothing to say. And this is definitely my privilege to be here to learn many things from Rokik sir and all of the panelists as well really good and i enjoyed a lot I actually uh, i'm really sorry that i could not join previously in many classes so it definitely it is a, a privilege for not for me as well for the whole nation's cardiologists to learn ecg in this forum and definitely inshallah uh, in this forum will go on so that we can learn more and more ecg uh, from the fixer and all the panelists uh, bangladeshi panelists as well Thank you, sir, for giving me the opportunity to learn from you, sir. Thank you. Jamil. Sir. Uh, actually, I always learn from the talk of Rafik, sir, and since 2004. And he always... Uh, Uh, admires me, I should say. It, it, anywhere where I'm not present, he al always uh, say good things of me. I don't know he, why he likes me so much. And I learn always from his talk. Uh, when he was uh, in NICBD, while we were starting EP in Bangladesh, uh, we learned a lot of things about EP. And I'm practicing those on my patient now. Uh, and regarding this uh, ECG study group session, uh, in each Saturday we are doing, uh, every day I learn so many things. Uh, still, uh, I feel like a student. Uh, thank you for organizing such a session. Thank you. So, uh, Finally, uh, Abdul Wadud Chaudhary will wrap up the session. But before that, I have got two sentences. Rupik, sir, actually, over the last one year, there are more than 40 sessions. Each session lasted nearly two hours. Initially, we had got more than 200 participants. Still now, we have got fixed participants, more than 100, live as well as in the Facebook. Rubik sir, you are the life of the session. You are our philosopher. You are our teacher. You are our mentor. Actually, I personally admit I am learning, still learning. I think every day I little, very, very little about the ECG. Still, we are learning. Even today, I have learned a lot. So, you are our teacher and you are life of the session, sir. And Rubik sir, we have added life to the life of this session. And Dr. Hafiz added new dimension to the session. And both of you has given an excellent say, forum for the discussion of the ECG. And we must congratulate our another foreign faculty, Dr. Urun Maski, 
and his team from the Nepal, sometimes they have added, joined with us and they have given the new dimension again. And finally, our national participants, that is faculties like Jamil, then uh, Mohsin, then Sophie, and Govindu, we must admit, that is the Govindu, and our uh, Shahabuddin, Professor Shahabuddin from uh, uh, Silet, as well as Anisul Awal from the Chittagong, many more. Ruizuddin Mondol from the Rashe always inspired us. And finally, we have also found a good team of the pediatric cardiology, particularly Naharuma and the Rezona Rima and also our madam also. We have got a new insight into the pediatric issue. So this is the ECG forum. And finally, I must congratulate. I am working with Professor Abdullah Adu Choudhury. He is a very, very, very popular teacher and his popularity has added another new dimension to this session. So we want to continue this session. Thus, there is a break for the one month. And if the participant want, we can arrange a special session during the Ramadan if the participant want. So this is the comment from this from my side. Professor Wadu Choudhury can wrap up the session. And finally, I must congratulate Rivu. You are wonderful. And there is no parallel to you, Rivu. Thank you very much. And Professor Wadu Choudhury, I'm ready to see that of the session. Athar Pai. আমাদের খুব ভেটারেন কার্ডিওলজিস্ট নুর ইসলাম ভাই আছে নারায়ণগঞ্জের তাই না নুর ইসলাম ভাই আপনি আনমিট করে একটু কমেন্ট করেন আমরা খুবই আনন্দিত যে আপনি আমাদের সাথে আসছেন নুর ইসলাম ভাই মিউট হয়ে গেছে মিউট হয়ে গেছে আপনি হ্যাঁ এখন ঠিক এবার ঠিক আছে थैंक यू वेरी मच प्रोफेसर वदुद এন্ড আথার আলি এন্ড আদার্স एक्चुअली learning and you know there is no end so in every aspect you you are we are uh, we are actually and this is a space to learn everything you know uh, and thank you very much uh, you are uh, involving arch uh, in this aspect and there are very common things if is the that is the starting point for the cardiologist and the generalist general practitioners also for to identify the uh, what uh, what the ecg comments so so thank you very much and uh, we will be waiting for next month uh, to uh, participate with you thank you all for a nice थैंक वेरी मच because every uh, every every sessions every year the, we are learning lot of things lot of things and ecg really it is a uh, in new new things we learn every day so thank you ropi kamath sir and prof athar ali uh, wadu choudhury and uh, jamil bhai and all panelists and all the uh, participants thanks thanks very much and uh, we uh, hopefully we'll meet after ramadan uh, मीनिंगस can learn from the wisdom of a very very i should say a very proggaban manush rafiq sir dhonnobad apnake amader antor theke amader mostishko theke shudhu apni amader mathar moddhe jinish thukiye denni apni moner moddhe amader chap rekhe gechen ei desher santan amra ei desh ke sonar bangla korar shopno আমরা সবাই দেখি 
এবং কালেকটিভলি সেটা সম্ভব আপনি সেই উদ্দেশ্যে কাজ করে গেছেন কিছু পাওয়ার জন্য না এবং আপনাকে দেখে আমরাও যেন ইন্সপায়ার্ড হই এই যে আতার ভাই বলছেন ম্যান্টোর ম্যান্টো শব্দটার অর্থ কিন্তু অনেক কিছু গভীর আপনি সুনিশ্চিতভাবে এই শব্দার্থগুলো আপনার অস্তিত্বে ধারণ করেন আমরা কৃতজ্ঞ উই আর সো মাচ গ্রেটফুল টু ইউ অ্যান্ড অল দ্য অডিয়েন্সেস ফর ইউর লাইভলি প্রেজেন্টেশন অল দ্য ফ্যাকাল্টিস ফর ইউর সো মাচ বিউটিফুল কন্ট্রিবিউশন অল অফ আস আর টুগেদার লার্নিং প্রোগ্রেসিং অ্যান্ড সার্ভিং বেটার আওয়ার পেশেন্টস হোপফুলি উই শ্যাল কন্টিনিউ দ্য সেম থিং দিস বিউটিফুল জার্নি আফটার রমাদান উইল বি কন্টিনিউইং অ্যাগেইন অ্যান্ড হোপফুলি উইল ফাইন দ্য এগার ওয়েটিংস অডিয়েন্স ওয়েটিং ফর আস অ্যাট দ্যাট টাইম থ্যাংক ইউ এভরিবডি অ্যান্ড বেক্সিমকো রিভু অ্যান্ড ইয়োর টিম কামরুল অ্যান্ড আদার থ্যাংক ইউ সো মাচ ইউ হ্যাভ বিন অলওয়েজ উইথ আস উইথ সো মাচ ডিফিকাল্টিজ ইউ আর স্টিল কন্টিনিউইং উইথ আস ফর দিস অলমোস্ট ওয়ান ইয়ার অ্যান্ড ফ্রম দ্য টিম ফ্রম অ্যাপ্রো অরুণ মাস্কি অ্যান্ড প্রিভিয়াসলি from when we are doing it uh, in the afternoon or evening uh, those from Malaysia or Maldives they joined us and that actually gave us inspiration Hafiz Bhai and other faculties from abroad they have given the glamour to these sessions and as Adhar Bhai was saying another dimension Shobai Mile Amra Juno Bhalo Thakki Shobai Mile Juno Amra Gyaner Shottir Shundorer চর্চার অভ্যাসটা ধরে রাখি সেই আশা নিয়ে সবাইকে শুভরাত্রি স্যার আই হ্যাভ এ হামবল রিকোয়েস্ট স্যার স্যার উই আর ডেইলি এনকাউন্টার্ড এ প্রবলেম ইসিজি ইন দ্যাট কেস হোয়েন উই কমিউনিকেট উইথ স্যার প্রফেসর ওয়াদুস স্যার প্রফেসর আতার আলী স্যার জামিল স্যার ইফ গেট এনি রেসপন্স ইটস ভেরি মাচ হেল্পফুল ফর আস You're always welcome, Lovinda. Yeah, I'm going to send me the ECGs. I'll, I'll try to... Continuously, uh, we are facing so much difficult ECGs, so varieties of ECGs. And ultimately, special thanks and gratitude deserve uh, ECG study group, a largest academic group. We have learned a lot from this f- academic field. Salute, sir. फेसबुक जुअली <laughs> मन जो